Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, forcing ourselves to summarize the gospel in a mere seven words can help us really get to the heart of the matter. And when it's all said and, go- when it's all said and done, what is the good news of Jesus Christ? Well, two weeks ago, we considered uh, captivity and freedom. And, and we talked about how Jesus frees us from captivity to sin as well as to death. Last week, we reflected on death and life. And we discussed how Jesus gives life to those who are dead in sin. With both of these themes, we noticed that uh, confessing the gospel involves two fundamental truths. First, the gospel, um, the bad news comes before the good news. It's the bad news, we might say it in a variety of ways, but one way of a creation that's turned away from its creator or children who've turned away from their father. Uh, This is the bad news, and it's the source of all that's wrong with this world. But the good news we proclaim is a God who loves his creation, a father who seeks uh, to continue to be in relationship with his children, and who reigns over creation in mercy and love through our Lord. Was well, these last couple of weeks of Lent wind down, I encourage you uh, to continue your, your study of the scripture and to reflect on, uh, as you reflect on maybe favorite Christian songs or hymns, uh, and to think about faithful brothers and sisters in Christ and how they have modeled the Christian life for you. And the theme for us to discuss today, in light of that, uh, and in, the, uh, in light of this, uh, some of the issues that our culture deals with, is isolation and community. Um, you know, despite, and, and maybe in part because of, the global and almost instantaneous connectivity that we have at our, our fingertips and our phones, many in our world struggle more severely than ever with isolation. Uh, Fortune magazine published an article a while, uh, about, uh, I guess it's seven years ago now, called Chronic Loneliness is a Modern Day Epidemic. We could probably find all kinds of articles and, uh, that talk about that. Uh, that article describes uh, the physical and emotional problems associated with loneliness, and it analyzes the situation, examines a variety of causes that contribute to it. For instance, studies have shown um, that uh, the percentage of people who are regularly l- lonely has more than doubled. In the 1970s and 80s, 11 to 20 percent reported frequent loneliness. In 2010, that number jumped to 40 to 45 percent, and that's even before the pandemic. Um, perhaps you know what it means to feel alone. And you know what it's like to be the only person in the house or the apartment, perhaps the only person doing something. After a a long stretch with little human contact, perhaps sometimes you feel overcome with feelings of isolation. Other times we can feel alone even when we're in a, a crowded room or part of a big family. We may be sharing space with other people, but we still feel a distance or or disinterest, or a a dearth of real connection. Then there's the loneliness that sneaks up on us through social media. You've got hundreds of friends and thousands of likes, um, but one negative comment on there can make you feel like junk. Well, the scriptures have a lot to say about isolation and community. As uh, we've done for the last several weeks, I'll be asking again for your help and as we do a little brainstorming and um, and let's begin with a reading rereading uh, section of Psalm 68 uh, this section came from Psalm da- from the pen of David and would someone read that uh, off the screen for us all right we'll start with Donovan God 
Yeah, sing, sing praises to God, sing praises to his name, the father, the father, fatherless and protector of the widows. God settles the solitary in their home. Um, we've been answering some questions, and so uh, we've been starting with the easiest way is maybe to think of a single word, but if it takes a couple words, that's fine. But when you think about lonely, what are some of the words that come to mind when you think about lonely? Clara? Okay, scared. Yeah. Sad. Yeah, I mean, lonely, sad. Don Alone. Alone. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, well, we'll, we'll um, listen to uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. The Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Why do you think it might not be good for us to be alone? I mean, this is not, I don't think there's one right uh, answer for this, but why might it not be good for us to be alone? Um, there's probably times when it's good to have some alone time, but why might it, when might it not be good? Bill? You have a helper. You got, okay. You're, you got someone to help you out when you get into, uh, into a sticky situation or if you lose something, then maybe your wife helps you find it, for instance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, relationships can... Uh, there, there's no such thing in this world as a perfect relationship, and relationships force us to, to interact and, and look away from ourselves. And like you say, looking at ourselves too much, that, that's a recipe for depression, I think, or, or at least feelings of, of that sort. Donovan? Okay, yeah. A lack of balance, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those are all, I mean, that, there's one last one, Claire, and then we're going to. Yeah, if we get angry, some of us, when we get lonely too long, we get angry and throw things, break things. Yeah. Um, good. Good, yeah, these are reasons why, uh, why too much alone time can be not so great. Um, can you think of, let's see, can you think of people in the Bible, we're not going to go over their whole stories, but think of any characters in the Bible who found themselves alone or felt particularly lonely? Jesus, okay, yeah, certainly, alone in the garden, Jonah, yeah, must have felt lonely in a big old fish whale, whatever it was. Okay, Joseph, yeah, that's a good one. David, yeah, when he's on, yeah, he's running and or facing. What's that? Elijah, yeah, yeah, he's. There's no one left, Lord. You know. Hmm. David, oh yeah, we have. Yeah, Daniel and the lion's den, yeah. But not Daniel's buddies, because there was, makes me think of that song, there was another in the fire. I'm getting my giggle from. Um, yeah, so there's a lot. Of, I mean, we could, we, could, we could keep going with this list for a while. The lepers, a couple other guys, the lepers, uh, who are, or isolated from everyone else. Um, uh, Saul, uh, no, David, as he was being pursued by Saul. Moses, coming before having to deal with the, the Israelites, and he's up on the mountain, and he, any number of times Moses feels very alone. One time he feels alone, and he needs 
Uh, his father-in-law gives him some su good suggestions so he doesn't have to face his problems, uh, the, the tasks he's got all alone. There's a lot of characters in the Bible who, just like probably all of us at some point in our lives, can feel very alone. And, and uh, that loneliness and that isolation, you know, there's a reason why uh, they, you know, they talk about putting people in the hole or in isolation, and there's, you know, how much worse can prison get, you'd think, and then, but it can if you're all by yourself with no other contact. Um, so, uh, during, uh, on the other hand, during many of our most joyful moments, we are with other people, and either quick examples of when you could, th or how wide do you think that is? Okay, yeah, joy is not something, it's just, you know, you, you want to share it. Yeah. Donovan? Okay, parties. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is a good example. Presents, you know, presents are nice, but isn't it a whole lot better... I'd much rather open presents with people than just, you know, it'd be one thing, right? I mean, a couple years ago when a lot of people stayed home for Christmas or didn't, it was a little different, you know, it was, you got, you, you know, from our family, we didn't see as many people. We got presents, but it wasn't, we, it was obvious it wasn't just about the presents because it still didn't feel as nice without other, other people there. Clara? Yeah, and when you're lonely, um, makes me think of uh, when when you're lonely and nobody's there. It's just you, or if you have, let's say, you experience some some difficult emotions. If you have no one there, there's nobody to help balance you or lift you up, um, and it can make a big big difference. You know, you know, like in the schoolyard when kids get upset with each other or one friend gets mad at another. It's it can feel very lonely and it can help if somebody you know, befriends that person who feels lonely. The same thing's true anywhere, but um, there's, there's a reason we are created uh, to, to be with, with others. Um, let's uh, read Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 10. Can I get a volunteer to do that? Um, let's see. Clara. Multitude. Yeah, this picture from Revelation chapter 7 of people from every nation, tribe, and language standing and crying out, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. When you think of heaven and community, and speaking of heaven in that sense, especially of community, who or what comes to mind? No. Okay. How about good? Who who else? Does anybody have anybody specific they think of? Yeah. We can't we can't answer that in this sermon. <laughs> anybody anybody have anybody What great music? Great music? Good, yeah. Yeah. How about, do you think of any persons? Your parents. Yeah, that's a good, you know, thinking of people, you know. Um, and that's, you know, the great defeat of isolation, you know, finding um, 
where we would be isolated forever otherwise, but uh, reunited. I uh, would probably think of you know, loved ones um, or, or fellow church members, I mean, who we, members from, from Grace, you know, who, who we miss. Um, and, and coming back together, you think of all, all kinds of people, not, not just in general, generically, but uh, it's nice, I think, to think of heaven, when we think of heaven, to think of some specific individuals. And uh, that makes heaven seem a little more real and a little more important uh, and, and more joyful when we think of some of those people who we haven't seen for so long and see them once again. Um, uh, well, uh, sometimes we describe the Lord's Supper as a foretaste of the feast to come. Um, how is uh, the Lord's Supper a reunion or a community? How might we think of the... Lord's Supper is a yeah, yeah. We're all we're gathered together, Clara. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we're all, yeah, all equal, all rep- all sinners receiving forgiveness. Um, there's a special thing that's not often thought of, but we, when we take communion, it's it's that we're taking it and we're connected to Christ, but we're taking it really not only with everyone else who's there, but through all Christians throughout space and throughout time, uh, because we're all being connected back to to one body. Uh, to uh, our Lord and Savior. Um, well, the, the uh, Christian poet and clergyman John Donne said, no man is an island. And he was right. That's why it isn't good for us to be alone. God created us to be in community with him and with one another. And that's why tonight, as we consider the gospel in terms of the gracious community into which God has placed us, we're baptized into Christ and connected to one another. We commune with the Lord around one body, around one table, and uh, together we live the good times and bad, glorifying God, supporting one another in Christian love uh, and charity. And all of this is because of uh, the gospel, because of Jesus. And one last time, the verses from Psalm 68, sing to God, uh, sing praises to his name, lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord Exult before him, father of the fatherless, protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home, and God has settled all of us in uh, a home, in his home. God in Christ refuses to leave us on our own. In Jesus' name, amen.